Championship with a 3-1 victory over Manchester United. Tenth time in their history they've won the First Division Championship. In 1991, we won the league as George Graham's side built on their success two years earlier to dominate English football. For players like David Hillier and Kevin Campbell, it was their first taste of major success, having come through our youth system together. And looking back on that campaign, there was only one place to start, by remembering a fiery encounter at Old Trafford. So Kev, that season 91, lots of things went on, you know, we went lots of games unbeaten, we had lots of clean sheets, we had um, a bit of a brawl at Old Trafford. Yep. So we'll start with that one, yeah. right, with the brawl. Yeah. Um, I personally wasn't involved in the game. I weren't I'd involved. Traveled. We travelled. We travelled, but we actually weren't picked, weren't even on the no. bench. The funny thing about that squad is we knew we were tough. We knew what we were. I think that was probably the height of George Graham's powers mm. with that squad. And to go to Old Trafford, you know, Manchester United, huge club, and to really take it to them was, was special. And obviously, they were targeting Anders and, and Nigel. And I think Nigel and Brian McClare didn't quite see eye to mm. eye. Mm. And obviously, Anders scored the goal, but the talking point obviously was the kickoff. Yeah, the, the kickoff, but, but what, what stimulated that was our gaffer, George Graham, and we'll, we'll touch on him again in a minute, about how he made us all. I mean, a collective unit, camaraderie. He, if he said that word once a day, he said it a hundred times. Hundred times, hundred times. Um, uh, we always had to have each other's back. And he didn't mind us piling in. He was quite happy for us to back each other. It oh, showed yeah. how strong we were. Oh, yeah. Um, and at the same time, he could click his fingers and we'd all stop and freeze. Yes, and yes. And be listening. And I think that was key. We all, we all sang from the same uh, hymn. I, I, I don't know if you remember, George Graham used to say he didn't want any clicks. He said he didn't want any pockets of players. If you were going to do something, you all done it together. Yeah. Or don't do it at all. And I think, obviously, Tony took that on. And, and, and we, I mean, a lot of us were coming through the, through the ranks as well. So we had that closeness. Anybody who came in from outside, Lee Dixon, Steve Bold, they quickly joined that group. And that togetherness was important. You know, when you're on that pitch, it is them against us. It's war. So we had the brawl. Mm -hmm. We had the brawl at United. And... The next day, next training session, stood us all outside at London Colney. He was reading us the right act, but he was bursting with pride. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, he really was bursting, yeah, bursting with, with pride, pride because that is what the fans love. That's what we loved as players. You know, getting out there, winning games and, and hopefully going to be champions. Mm. You know, that's that's a champion and, caliber and that, team. And that's the hard work that he put in to the, to the youth team and reserves and first team, all playing the same way. I remember we used to do the same throw-ins in the youth team, as we did in the reserves, and the, and the first, first team. team, and the corners, and the free kicks. But that was the plan. George yeah. Graham, he was meticulous, as you know. He was. That was the plan. He had a plan of how to do things. And it was easier going into the first team, if you knew what the game plan was. Do you, do you think he'd put Tony Adams' gel into his plan? How did, he, how did he get over that? He obviously couldn't have known that was going to happen, so he had to do something special at that time because we was in a really good position. Yeah. And we was, you know, we was on our way to potentially winning the league and we yeah. knew that, we knew we had a good side. The way he dealt with it, you know, just, I, I don't remember him actually addressing us. I think he just done it in his own way, quietly with Ken Fryer and the club, looked after the situation and said, I'm going to work with the players I've got. Yeah. Look, you know, when you lose Rodders, he's, he is the leader, isn't he? He's the leader on the pitch. But when you actually lose him, there was no big hullabaloo from, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the gaffer at no. the time. It was, we, actually what we'd done is we got to work on the training pitch, mm. if you remember rightly, mm. and he worked us hard because he knew what Tony done and how Tony would organise, we needed to be right. Mm. And that's what we done and, you know, we didn't really miss him that much. No, I think Andy Linnigan stepped in, didn't he? He came in and, and he'd always been the third choice out yes. of Boldy and, and, and Tony and himself and he stepped in. And then it brings us to that day in February. I think it was the day before your birthday, mate. I think it was the 2nd of Feb. If you, yeah. Is it the 3rd of Feb you're still? Fourth, fourth, fourth. Fourth of Feb. Two days yeah. before your birthday, that um, our unbeaten run come to an end. Yep. People have asked me since, did it hurt that you'd lost the unbeaten run? I don't, I don't remember actually thinking about an unbeaten run. I, I remember George saying, you just don't concede in the game and you can't lose. And we'll, that's one, our game One game at a season. time. It was always yeah. one game at a time. It's, it's obviously the old cliche, one game at a time. 
But what I remember about that day, remember it's a London derby. Mm. Chelsea's a London derby and Chelsea seemed to have a little sign over us. And us going there, you know, we, we felt we felt good about ourselves going there. We thought we were going to get a result. And I think it's the way we lost that, that hurts quite, uh, most of all. And that I think, was the most And then to lose Boldy, who'd been Tony standing. He'd, yes. he'd become the rock and yes. stood in there. And he'd always been it, but he was a little bit quieter. To lose Boldy at that stage, I think, was, was difficult. But we, we rallied after that. You rallied again. You had a fantastic end to the season. Yeah, I, I think mean. Eight goals in 10 games. Yeah, at, at the starting end of that to season. feel comfortable, you know. Starting to feel comfortable with, in the team, starting to get more minutes in the team. Yeah. I think that's important. You know, once you start to play and you start to find your feet, you know, it, it, for me it was, that's where we're, that's the only place where we, I wanted to be, was mm. out there with the team mm. winning. Had a great run at the end of the season, had great players around us. And, uh, you know, for, for me it was, I used to go to Highbury as a kid. My first game was seven years old. So to be able to come on the pitch, and make a, a difference for the first big team. Difference, wow. Difference. That concludes the first part of Hillier and Campbell's look back on our 1991 title winning season. But join us next week as the pair wrap up the campaign and sum up their experiences at our club.